Hey guys, this is Gary from SNG. Thank you so much for watching our channel. And today I'm going to be doing a repair on a generator board, uh, model 83970GS is the part number. And I don't see these too often that come through in the shop to be repaired, but one of the customers down in South Carolina actually uh, wanted me to get this fixed. So I'm going to put an abbreviated repair video on this channel. If you want to see the really long drawn out repair process with the digital microscope that I have here in the bottom corner, uh, I will be able to show you some of the final, <laughs> final results of what happened. It may not look the prettiest, but it works and that's what's important and it'll be ready to go back into his machine once he gets it in the mail. Thank you guys so much for supporting our channel and check out the video. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. And I have a bit of a treat for you guys. I am repairing this surface mount for the 83970GS. You can see the part number here on the bottom, but this particular board I don't see very often. And you're gonna find this on a lot of Generac boards. This board is a replacement for the through hole component board that was very popular on a lot of these XL and EXL machines. And this was the last version that Generac, Briggs & Stratton made before they discontinued it. And a customer had sent this in to me for repair. As you can see here, it's missing the R3 voltage adjustment potentiometer here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and fix that and then check the board for all these other components. I'm using my Tomlov 4K digital microscope so you can see this very, very clearly. And it's gonna be very helpful for me as well because this thing is extremely small. What I also am gonna do is I'm gonna also add in this other camera angle. As we're testing the components, we can actually see what we're actually seeing on the voltimeter and whatever the values are, I can flip this around and I can move this around just a little bit, just so we can see what I'm doing here on the microscope. And a lot of these components are pretty much the same, just in a different format of the through hole mount. Now we have these surface mount with these MELF diodes and uh, some of these surface mount capacitors, these really tiny transistors. The circuit is essentially the same. Now here we have the board a little bit a wider screen and as I mentioned I am going to go ahead and replace R3 here it looks like there's a decent amount of damage here also we're going to need to check R15 which shows a little bit of discoloration and if I flip the board over we see here that we are missing a trace that's going back over to the snubber connector here so that right there is an issue that we're going to have to run a jumper wire to fix this trace also notice here too, where R3 is, this trace has also broken, which leads to this part of the resistor. This is R2. So this piece needs to be jumpered back over to the potentiometer as well. And that is just yet another piece that we're gonna have to fix. All right, now that we got that jumper wire fixed, I'm just gonna clean up the front side of this board with some rubbing alcohol. I'll put the silicone on the back of it once I'm all done, making sure that this circuit works properly. Now we obviously have a problem here because there's no solder pad here to go and attach to. So I'm gonna have to get a little creative here with how I'm gonna attach this part of the resistor over to this leg of the potentiometer, which is going to be 
some of that off. That's better. We're not going to use that middle lug there. You can see where the trace went. You can see where the burn mark is there. But now that it's drying off. Hmm. All right. Well, I actually got an idea. I'm going to try to actually get some stick on copper trace instead of a jumper wire for this particular fix. And I think that ought to do it. Now I'm going to use what's called hot snot. It's basically just hot glue. And this is what gives the mechanical strength. That was actually on there from the factory. This also will act as a insulator as well. That way, when he pushes back as he's adjusting the and geometer will have some something to push back against. I found that the silicone can cure a little bit quicker using some UV light. We'll go ahead and do that here for a few minutes and that should hopefully cure it a little bit quicker than I usually wait it for. All right, and here's a test of the voltage regulation. So right now it's powered off. You need to run 120 volts to the blue wire and then to the bottom spade connector of your voltage power regulator board here. You should see roughly 117 kilo ohms. Just make sure I get a good connection here. All right, now with this potentiometer turned all the way counterclockwise, you're gonna see that that Resistance won't change, so I'll turn on the power here. It's not going to change too much. I'll shut it off. And now I got to do this with both hands here off camera. I'm going to go and turn this completely clockwise, and we should see that number drop down to about 64 to 68 kilo ohms. All right, it's all the way clockwise. Now let's go and turn on the power. And there we go. So the voltage regulation circuit is repaired. All right, here we are gonna go and test the idle circuit. So what we have is we have the hot connected to the white, the neutral connected to the green, and the pins two and three, pin two is the negative and the green one, uh, pin three is the positive. Right now we're showing in millivolts. So what we should see is about a five volt before it charges up. And let me just zoom out a little bit. So when I apply 120 volts to this particular circuit, it should go from five volts to 109 DC volts. And that's what powers the solenoid. So here it goes, power on. And it goes right to 109 because I just had it powered. All right, well, no more snap, crackle, pop. And I know for sure that that circuit is working correctly. Awesome. Well, guys, I'm going to end the video here. If there's any questions on the repair, please let me know. Uh, I wanted to get this video in because I just don't see these surface mount ones come through on my bench for repair that often. They're built very well, but when they do need work, it's, it's probably need a lot more finesse with the smaller components. Thankfully, with the right tools, my eyes are not going boggly, and I can see it on the screen as well as you guys can see exactly what I'm doing to hopefully give you an idea of what kind of work is involved for repairing 
something like this. The through hole is about the same amount of difficulty, but maybe a little bit quicker just because it's through hole. It's a lot easier to handle versus these tiny little resistors, which are about the size of a pinhead, about a half millimeter to one millimeter small. And that becomes very difficult to see without a digital microscope to see what you're doing. And also very steady hands. That's another problem that uh, you have to <laughs> have very steady hands. Thank you guys so much again for watching. I'll see you guys on the next project.